pray that every one of your lives will be that way. As you worship Him because you love Him. Because then it's not mechanical. It's real, you know? In the morning
sorry guys, I gotta break this down without being really disturbing. Sunday's message was entitled Just Jesus at the Church. And I kept thinking back to that when he was singing that song. You know, you hear a lot of, um, I just call it nonsense. A lot of nonsense out there. This one's got a word, that one's got a new teaching, this one's got a new doctrine, this one's seen a vision, and had a dream, and la la la. But you know what I want? Jesus. That's uh, unadulterated Jesus. I'm not saying he doesn't give visions and he doesn't have words, but you know what? Ultimately, I just want Jesus. That's right. I really do. Mm-hmm. I'm glad he uses us. I'm glad he uses people. Really, I just enjoy him. Really. And because I enjoy him so much, and John, we thank you so very much for everything. Hallelujah, you. brother. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord's got a word for you. I'm debating about when to give it. It's actually got two. And um, But I'm thinking maybe I'll teach this message and then hit you on the way out. <laughs> they're good In case words. I don't like it. Or... No, they're good words. They're good I promise words. I won't be fine. If, they, if they weren't good words, I might wait and call you on the phone. But <laughs> They're good words. In fact, everybody may get something here tonight. I'll, we'll just see what the Lord's got. But because I love you so much, you took me back into the kitchen and, and changed my message. I uh, have every intention of doing part two of righteousness tonight. Every intention. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to do this one right here. And because of that, I want you to turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Recently, I had someone challenge my um, ability to hear accurately, accurately from the Lord about a particular word of exhortation, we'll call it, a word of caution. And uh, you know, I told you what was going to happen in your future by the Spirit through a vision. Yes. Accurately. You were in tears about it when it came to pass. I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. One of your relatives got completely healed under my message and. Now, all of a sudden, I have a word of correction. I don't want to hear that. And they have severed the relationship. Mm. What? It's unfortunate, but it happens. However, uh, with that said, I want to shed some light on some things that will probably probably help all of us in the long run as we hang out more and we go along life together as we do. Anybody excited that they mailed my watch back to me and it totally works now? <laughs> Amen. And the church said, yes. It's <laughs> without excuse now. I don't like to preach this message necessarily um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it, it always seems so flaky when you hear someone say, well, I'm this or I'm that. And, you know, and, and I just... Sometimes I just want to vomit when I hear that stuff. It's just terrible. Everybody's got a business card that says apostle this, prophet that. I just, you know, look, just give me Jesus. If you are, we'll see it. We'll know it. The proof is in the pudding. There's a function to it. Whether you put the title to it or not, we'll know something's up. And there's certain giftings and equippings and qualifications that go with each office. And if you don't have it, if you've not passed the test, you're just not it. I mean, maybe he's showing you something that will happen in the future, but you're just not there. You know? That's why you don't put novices in the office. Uh, I don't care how on fire for the Lord they are. There's just certain tests you have to take. That's why you don't yoke up with unbelievers. 
That's why you don't let them in your innermost council. There's just common sense involved in some of these things. But I'm on more than one occasion, on more than one occasion since we've been doing this school, I have heard him say, explain to them the office of the prophet. And I said, I'm sorry, what I didn't hear that. What was that? Hmm. And um, he just won't let it be. And he took me there in the kitchen tonight and he asked me to minister this message to you. And I'm probably, and whether you believe what I'm telling you or not, personally, at least the message may clear up some questions in your mind about what is or isn't something like that. Because uh, I don't want you to be abused. I don't want you to be taken advantage of. I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to be manipulated. I don't want you to be hurt. I don't want people to just mess with you, mostly. It is probably where the heart of this is coming from. But um, with that said, I want to explain this to you. And, uh, you know, me personally, there, there's, um, I, I don't know that I walk around every day of my life. I don't, you know, in a prophetic manhole. Nobody I know does. But I can tell you this. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't experienced it, if you haven't wondered about it, it happens in my life pretty consistently, publicly. Not just privately in my own little cheer room, but <laughs> publicly often actually it happens. Because it's a part of who I'm called to be. It's a part of what I do. But that's not the only office. The New Testament prophet is not a standalone office. You're either a prophet teacher, a prophet pastor, a prophet evangelist. There's always a mix that goes with it. And anybody that tells you different just doesn't know the scriptures. This won't be all encompassing tonight, but I believe it'll, it'll shed a lot of light on some things. And then we're probably going to see some manifestations. It's just generally how it happens. You start talking about somebody, generally they show up. You know, <laughs> They feel welcome, they'll come running. I'm going to see my mom in a little bit for just a short time. I won't miss here or anything like that. Um, but I'm going to raid her refrigerator because I know I'm welcome there. <laughs> and she has cheese this big. And I'm going in there and sorry, you know, it's gone. That's my, I just love that cheese. But anyway, <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, or I set you apart, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. This is not something you call yourself to. I'll be honest with you, it's not something you really even want. And even when it's in your life, you're still shaking your head going, Oh Lord, please, are you serious? I didn't want to say what I said to this person recently. You know, I, I didn't want to. I, it would have been easier for me to let it go. They would have been gone, and, and I never would have had to have probably ever said anything at all, ever. And I didn't stand to gain anything at all from it, at all. But love won't let it go. Mm -hmm. Authenticity won't let you leave That's right. without giving you the caution he says to give to you. Real love cares enough for you to hate me for telling you the truth. Real love is braver than death. Death of a relationship, death of a friendship. Real love cares enough to be lied, spit upon, hung on a cross, denied, ostracized, spoken about. So, if anybody comes to you about Pastor Eric, <laughs> you've been forewarned. To be forewarned is to be forearmed and Ask yourself, well, he told us about that the other day. So, anyway. But uh, he says, um, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. N not everybody has a call to the nations. That's right. Even if you're not a prophet, even if you're a pastor. Not everybody has a call to this or to that. It's, it's as the Lord wills. And usually, it, it comes with an equipping. To whom much is given, much is required. Mm. But if you're not faithful over a little, you'll never be made ruler over much. And so even if you are appointed to the nations and you're not faithful over your own little two by two, probably not going to get there. It was the Lord's will. It was foretold. But it's not going to happen. You know, I was on the phone today with somebody about, does God have just one person for you? Just one right person for you? And he was saying our pastor at home says, well, no, I don't believe that he does. Because how are you, what, what if that person, there's one person that God has for you, 
And what if they miss God and you never meet? So there's probably several people that could be the one for you. And some of my research says they probably live short three or four or five miles away from you, truth be told. Um, you don't stone New Testament prophets like you did Old Testament because in the New Testament, prophecy is conditional. It's conditional on people. Man, there's such a, a, an anointing stuff. It was already here. Mm-hmm. And when he plays music, all it does is just pull that out. The, 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 that psalmist uh, you know, thing going on. Man, oh man, oh man. Really? <laughs> it just, whoo, higher than a kite. <laughs> higher than a kite. I was bragging on the other day, but anyway, that's not true. <laughs> but uh, such a sweet anointing in here. That always goes with this message. I, I mean, it's, I don't not want to preach it because I don't think it would be awesome. I just, I know how people talk. I don't need to undo criticism. I have battles I, I already fight, and I don't need to fight that many more. And it just gets exhausting. But it is what it is. You know, you just got to toughen up and move on. But um, but I, they said, well, no, he's, this is probably several people for you. And so, um, you know, we've all got to fulfill the qualifications in our lives for what God has for us. And I don't know uh, specific things just yet about any of you other than I do have a couple of good words for John. But I, I would venture to say this, that there's, there's a multiplicity of needs that are going to get ministered to tonight as we get into this. So in verse 6 he says, Then said I, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. I've been there. I can't speak because, 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 because. Mostly just, Lord, because I quit. I quit today. I quit the ministry today. That happens usually once a day. (laughs) Hallelujah. Especially after that last conversation. (laughs) People don't realize just how obnoxious they are to people. I would never treat ministers the way some people treat ministers. Even if I didn't agree. I just wouldn't do it. That's Mm -hmm. horrible. Mm -hmm. So disrespectful. And then you have a track record with them, and you accurately told them, super nat- I mean, not like, hey, I like your dog. I mean, this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Hey, this one needs a healing. Here, here you go. Mm-hmm. And then the minute, but I told y'all that about a couple months ago, didn't I? I said, I wonder how long folks would just love it if, if I ever corrected anybody. You know? And you have to earn that, right? But I believe in that situation, I earned it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we'll, but I think... I think what happened was, I think the conversation that took place was under this anointing. And this anointing is much, much tougher than the Pastor Eric anointing. Mm-hmm. When I step over into this anointing, it gets hard, it gets narrow, it gets laser beam, it gets specific, and it gets controversial, it cuts, you know? It's like throwing a rock into a pack of dogs. You know the one you hit's the one you hear yelping, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But that's why I don't walk around in this all day because I don't think I can take it. I don't think anybody else can take it. But when it happens, it happens, and I'm not supposed to apologize for it. But it's a blessing it's to set people free. And if they just listen, then if they just mm-hmm. listen, if they just took it to heart mm-hmm. and didn't get their feelings hurt and didn't get pride, God Almighty, how liberating would their lives be? Mm-hmm. God is sharing a secret with you, a secret. <laughs> And you have the audacity to rail against it. <laughs> and what is it? What is the mean, nasty word? And what's something like this? Don't make a gift that God's given you an idol in your life. Amen. That was generally the gist of what was spoken. God's given you a gift. Mm-hmm. Don't idolize it. Don't forget the one who gave you the gift. Amen. Mm-hmm. And they made it personal. They made it about me and my motives and my this and my that. Mm-hmm. What do I stand to get from it? I won't see them. Probably ever. I, I don't know. You know. Anyway, life goes on. <clears throat> but the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. That's, that can be tough. John, 4,000 people, and you're singing, and they're praising the Lord, you hope. And then somebody doesn't like the songs you chose. <laughs> and they're out there next week letting you know about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
they see you in the grocery uh. store. They got personal access to you. They got your phone number. They know your family. They know your friends, your relatives, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife. That's why I want to marry somebody that's got a shotgun. <laughs> oh, you have something to say about my husband? <laughs> <laughs> She's going with D on him. Hold up. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm going to say this, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. You know, Lynette, you'll appreciate this. Okay. Um, I'm colorblind. I am. I have great vision, but I'm colorblind. And um, I've been married before. I was married to a white girl who was part Native American. That's and then me, and then that's why my daughter looks like Pocahontas. And um, but I've had girlfriends since I've been single. Jesus was here the first time, the last time I was single, or the last time I was married. So I've had some years to date and to discover whatever. And the last several girls I've gone out with were. African American. What an amazing concept. What an amazing thought. Hey. Yeah. Oh, hey. 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 oh, I've heard it. Oh, my Lord. I remember being in New Year's. You, you think this is not the prophetic mantle, but guys, race relations is, a, is an issue the prophets are ministering to in this country day and night. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's day and night. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, truly, there's only two races of people in this earth. There's the saved and the lost. That's right. I mean, just if you just break it down. And um, anyway, but I remember New Year's, and they wanted to see me eat chitlins. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't that didn't go over real well. I know it did. <laughs> because uh, I, I don't. Well, you has anybody ever, ever 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 had chitlins? Anybody? Pig what is a chitlin? Pig guts. Have you ever? No. I'm not talking about the no, taste. Careful. I'm talking the about the smell. smell. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It smells like poop. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, think care. about it. Pig intestines. <laughs> mm. What do you think? That, and they're not really cooked. I mean, not these. No. These look like ramen noodles. Is what I know. Anyway, uh, moving right along. Oh my gosh. Moving right along. Uh, but the visuals. Yeah, but but I wanted to say this to say. <laughs> God help me. Get out of this. Um, <laughs> you gotta love my dirty rice, bro. <laughs> if you if you have animosity in your heart towards a particular race of people, God knows it, and it would be just like a prophet to draw attention to it, to say, you might want to look at that. And uh, there may even be somebody in here. And, you know, it goes the other way. I've been, you know, I <coughs> <laughs> sin knows no race. Sin is doesn't have one he prefers above the other. Sometimes, um, you know, we forget that. But mm -hmm. you're you're just as liable. To, to sin, whether you're blue, green, yellow, purple, mm -hmm. it's just there. And the sooner we realize that, we'll start acting in compassion towards one another more than we do. And uh, we'll start accepting one another for who we are. And we'll start judging each other's fruit by the color of your character and not the color of your skin. Because mm -hmm. that's really what matters. Mm -hmm. Uh... Anyway, I'm sure I said that for a reason, and it escapes me why I even brought that up, but I'm sure somebody needs to hear that. Go easy on people of other races is the gist of it, you know. And ask yourself, ask yourself, am I really colorblind? Because if you're not, well, in our righteousness study, one of the acts of unrighteousness is to hate your brother, or to treat your brother with ill will. You don't like somebody, you don't like them for who they are, not because how they look. Right. You know, just get to the heart of it. Anyway. Mm -hmm.
Let me tell you something about what Lynette might go through in the course of the day. 100 little silent heartbreaks of racist behavior. Unspoken, but just as loud as a megaphone. Why? Because she's got darker skin than most. Um, a friend of mine I used to live with, a uh, well-dressed guy, he was a former city spokesman, or a spokesman for the city council, mayor guy or whoever, and um, he was a black guy, and he, from time to time he just liked to take me to show I don't know why. And he'd always pay. And he'd always be dressed nicer than me, you know. But when the time came to pay, who do you think they handed the check to? I'm in flip-flops and shorts and a t-shirt, and I look a hot mess, because I've been out landscaping the whole time. And he's in nearly a suit, if not a suit. At Shoney's. And who do you think they sent, they had handed the check to, to pay? It wasn't me. I mean, it wasn't him, it was me. And I never paid. Little, 100 little heartbreaks because of the color of his skin. Things you'll never know, things you'll never see. White folks might never know about it. They never even cross anybody's mind. But we're drawing attention to it tonight. Amen. I don't know why, but we are. And then I'm sure after a while, there comes a time when you have to say to yourself, what do I think about white people? Kids, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Sam. Oh, sorry. And then where are we? And on Sunday morning, they say the most segregated day of the whole week is Sunday morning. Yeah. I was counting this up the other day in our church. I've counted all five races of people. Four, well, four of the five races of people I'm, I'm aware of have come pretty regularly. Um, we're still... Uh, Teresa is Indian. The dot in, not feather Indian like me, but dot Indian. Right. And um, then there's the Latinos, there's black folks, there's white folks. Um, Oriental, Asian, that's probably more Teresa, but then we're, then if we count her as Asian, part Asian, then we've got to go Arabian, you know, we've got to go the brown. And uh, I represent the red. <laughs> now they confuse me with the brown all the time. I've heard slurs my whole entire life. Mm. Yeah. Uh, probably not nearly, obviously not nearly what I'm sure you have had to deal with, but I've heard much fair share. And in a room full of white folks, generally speaking, guess who's the odd guy out? It's the shirt. Yeah. It's the shirt. That's what it is. Sorry, it's just coming out. We need to be honest. I heard, I heard, and I'm going to give... Uh, this was not me. This was a, a more well-known prophet, and if I said his name, you'd all know him. But he said this in Atlanta in 1996. I have never forgot it, the longest day I've lived. You might want to even write this down. God magnifies difference in love. The devil magnifies difference in hate. Uh, he said... If God took a picture of this, let's say this right here, in order for us to fully understand what he was trying to tell us, you'd have to line a black man, a white man, a red man, a yellow man, and a brown man up here, and get all their input, and then you're starting to get an idea of what God was trying to say. Mm-hmm. But you got to do, you got to get all of them, and not just one of them. Somebody asked me not long ago, did I know of anybody who could be a barrier, a bridge between black folks and white folks. I say absolutely, without even having to think about it. They're on all the reservations in this country. Red people. Red people are natural peacemakers. Mm-hmm. They just, they are. And I know in my own life, a lot of times, I, I, and I didn't grow up on a reservation, I don't, you know, but just there's just something about an anointing on a certain race of people that's just there. And, uh, but I know, I'd sit in a room and I'd say, I see exactly what she's saying. I see exactly what you're saying. And let me explain, maybe help. And, and it's, it works, it happens. I've seen it. I've seen it before. But yet, what do we have in this country? We've had the detention, and we've had the strife. Why? Because we annihilated the peacemakers that could have been there, that could have 
been a buffer. It could have been. Imagine if they were allowed to thrive and flourish, mm. and they were as among us as anybody. Mm. It's a sad commentary when you can get a college education because you're a sixteenth of a race. Mm. <laughs> That's how powerful that blood is. Oh, so, yeah. and I've got it on both sides of my family. Amen. Scotch Irish men came across the pond and married Cherokee women on both sides. <laughs> I've got eight of uh, my eight grand grandparents, four of them are Cherokee. You know, and the other four are Scotch Irish. I'm a walking peace treaty. <laughs> Let's go on. Uh, do not be afraid of their faces. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. There, there's another level to the prophetic office. There's another level to it. And, it, and, it's, and it's just, it's, it's like a hurricane in your tummy. I don't even know how else to say it. It's, it's like a violent thunderstorm in your inner man. Your eye, I don't know, your eyes glaze over, people get like nervous, like, you know. And there's just this thing that comes on you. There's just this thing that happens. And it's just this flurry of heaven in your heart. Mm -hmm. Of specific, revelatory words. He goes on to say, I have set you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, pull down, destroy, throw down, build, and plant. I don't see him getting a John Deere out there and doing this. This is with the words of his mouth. Now this is all ministers, but a prophetic ministry is especially so. To root out, what are you rooting out? Thoughts that people think that are not in line with the word. So guess what you're going to have? An, an ESP when it comes to things people think, attitudes of the heart, secrets, untold, unspoken stuff. And I told someone this other day, I think a great prophet is, you know, great or bad, great, I think that is more known for the secrets that he keeps or she keeps than the ones he kills. Mm -hmm. God's got to be able to trust you with secrets because that's a lot of what the prophetic ministry is, is, a, is, is keeping secrets and sometimes revealing secrets. There was a lady standing in front of me um, some years ago, wanting to buy a car, and she was telling me about all these revivals and things she was getting ready to preach. And I was a car salesman. And um, all of a sudden, between the two of us talking, was this film. And on this film was this number 1602. And the Spirit said, that's the hotel room number that her evangelistic team is going to stay in in this revival she's telling you about. That's a sign and a wonder to her that even though she's female and Pentecostal, uh, she's at the right place at the right time doing what I called her to do. Just tell her. So I told her. Three months later, she comes back and she says, Brother, we almost called you from Texas. That was exactly the room number that we stayed in. If I got you a place where you could preach your little heart out, would you? I was like, Lady, I got from five. Let's go. Let's go. In fact, I just quit now. No. Um, uh, well, I tell you what, even with Patty, Patty was sharing about the whole uh, the, the wedding ring and the thread of, of harvest through it. You remember her sharing that last week? Was anybody? I, I showed, I shared a vision, which was a word of wisdom in picture form, uh, some time ago that that there was a, a time coming soon that it would be a wedding ring, a man's wedding ring, gold and or this black and silver is the new style, and then I see a thread of wheat through it, and it's soon. And uh, lo and behold, she goes to Ohio. The guy she's married likes that kind of wedding ring, and he's got a big wheat field in his backyard or something like that. <laughs> and she's just in tears telling about it. Wow. You know, that, that's, that's a common occurrence. I, mm -hmm. I don't even know how many times things like that happen. Mm -hmm. I had calls last night at midnight from close friends of mine. They, they know it's okay for them to do this. Not everybody, but oh. man, the Lord told me to call you. He said, you got a word for me. Mm -hmm. I'm on the phone with some. I don't. Really? <laughs> you did? Because <laughs> you know you can get into witchcraft and channeling spirits. You can get power hungry. Manipulation. I, I, yeah. And, and I said, well, yeah, he told me, don't call me this late. <laughs> <laughs> I had it happen today before he came over here. <laughs> Told you I was sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Moreover, the word of the Lord said to me, Jeremiah, what did you see? The prophet's ministry is about seeing mm -hmm. what others don't see. It's the eye of the body. Mm -hmm. He said, I see a branch of an almond tree. 
The Lord said, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. See, things in picture form have symbolism to them. Almond means ready right now, ready to go. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and it's facing away from the north. The Lord said, out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdom of the north. And he goes on and tells him specifically what the interpretation of this vision is. If, if I get a word, if it's a vision, and he doesn't give me interpretation, it's not my responsibility to try to interpret it. It's my responsibility to just tell you. If he tells me what to say, I'll tell you. But you can get into trouble. If, he, if you see a giraffe and you start talking about a safari, you get in trouble because he might be talking about a stuffed animal. You know, you can't help God out. And I don't care how embarrassed you are, I don't care how awkward it is, say what you see, but not else, nothing else. And even if you're not in the prophetic ministry, only say exactly what he said, nothing more, nothing less. Or you'll get into real trouble and he'll stop using you that way. He will. And make sure it lines up with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Above all else, make sure your words line up with the Word of God. And yeah, amen. So, skip on over here to um, verse 17. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Did you know that sometimes when men and women speak to you, they are commanded to? And you might not like what they have to say, but they're still commanded to say it. And it's going to be up to you how you handle that. But if they don't speak it, they're going to get in real trouble. And I'd rather be in trouble with man than with God any day. And then he says, do not be dismayed before their faces. Here's a real revelation. Not everybody's nice. What an amazing thought. But they're not. Lest I dismay you before them. So if I ever cower down to any of anybody, of someone I'm supposed to say, guess what's going to happen? The Lord's going to allow me to be dismayed right in front of everybody. I don't want that. He says, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar, and the bronze walls against the whole land. Verse 19, and he didn't spare anybody in verse 18. Pastors or lay people or yourself. <laughs> you know, Eric, you need to suck it up and go. I don't like that. It hurts my feelings. You're mean to me. <laughs> verse 19, they will fight against you. Mm -hmm. Nuh-uh. Yeah, they will. Too. But they shall not prevail against you. Mm -hmm. For I am with you to deliver you. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. So you can't, there's always a trump card. If they get hard, God will harden you up harder. You know? Ministers are not called to be manby pambies. <laughs> Haven't you had enough of that? Mm -hmm. Haven't you had enough of backboneless mama's boys? Mm -hmm. Isn't it time to hear the truth? That's right. Go with me to um, Hebrews 13 and 8. And, I, you know, a real minister is not looking to, to chew on you. There's too, there's too much to do in the course of a day. Two days ago, I was on the phone with people from seven different states. Like, I have time to chew anybody out. And all of it was important, and all of it was ministry. You know? I, I don't want... I don't go looking for confrontation. I, I, if it was me, I'd hang out in my cave. And be, I'd be all good. Just keep peaches and watermelon coming. <laughs> That's prophetic right there. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I got a question for you. Is that true? Is he really the same yesterday, today, and forever? Then if, if, are you a part of, of the body of Christ? Is that, is that right? Are we the body of Christ? Yes. Mm -hmm. would, would the body of Christ ever change based on what this says? In other words, if he put apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists in his body to build his body up, would that ever change? No. Would it ever change? But you know, some people teach that it has. No. That apostles and prophets don't exist anymore. No. In fact, most people have only ever heard of a pastor and evangelist. No. The teacher is the odd guy out of all of them, no. unfortunately. No. But he's never changed. He never will change. And if there are apostles then, there's apostles now. If there's pastors then, there's pastor, or pastors now. Same thing with prophets. Go with me to... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 12 through 21. 
1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 12. Even so, since you are zealous of spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification. Actually, go to chapter 12. Chapter 12, 21. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. That would have been good, but let's go to 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized in the one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member but many. If the foot should say, Because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, Because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as He pleased. There's a reason that I'm here. There's a reason that you're here. God had a purpose. He had a plan. Of all the million different places you could be tonight, you're here. <laughs> by design. I mean, I, you have. I, I have to say this. It's by design. Right. And, it, and, there's, and, and really, the responsibility is not on God to tell you why. The responsibility is on you to discover why. The Bible says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the honor of kings to search it out. Maybe you're waiting on God and he's waiting on you. Why am I going over to Dunedin on Wednesdays at 7? Is it just to hear this half-read speak or praise the Lord a little bit, or is there more to it than that? Does Jesus need something that only I can offer? Does Miss Colleen have a need? I've never met her, but this is, might be my one shot to get to speak a word to a senior in our midst. My one shot to sow a seed into my mom with Miss Colleen right there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. These are things we should think about. Yeah. All right. So it goes on and it says... Um, and if all were one member, verse 19, where would the body be? So we're not just an arm or a leg, we're the whole body. But now indeed there are many members, yet one body, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. So you can't say about a prophet, you're not necessary, we don't need you, you don't exist anymore. We don't need the, can you imagine trying to walk around with your eyes closed all the time? It's not... Thank the Lord she put seahorses on that glass door. Right there. <laughs> I almost bit it the other day. If I hadn't looked up and seen those seahorses, I'd have been like that guy, a little kid on TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The bird flying. It was, I, think it was, I think it was, we were coming in from the dock out there after a Wednesday, you know, we're hanging out up there. And I mean, man, <laughs> ooh, I saw that seahorse an inch from my nose. I'm, like, I'm not in the ocean. Wait a minute, where'd that seahorse come from? Oh, there's a door there. 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. And God has appointed these in the church. So I'm by appointment. Mm -hmm. I'm by appointment. Mm -hmm. Say that with me. I am by appointment. I am by appointment. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, and gifts, he's described in the evangels right there, miracles, mm -hmm. gifts of healing, helps administrations of writings of tongues as the pastor, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, etc., etc., etc. So they're appointed and put into the body. And you can't disdain them and you can't despise them. They're actually, go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8, they are a gift from God to you. It's not just Eric. Good old buddy Eric. I, I mean, I like to be liked. But these, this guy's, there's a gift. There's a gift. To me, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 4 and 8. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Skip on down to verse 11. And he himself gave, so he's talking about the gifts he gave, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Ah, it's my job to hand you stuff to do. It's my job. To hand you stuff to do in the ministry. It's my job. 
till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Go to uh, Acts chapter 13 and verse 1. Some people limit the, the apostolic, the prophetic, and all that to the twelve apostles. But we know that's not true. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Some were prophets and some other office. Some were prophets and teachers. Some were just teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger. Now I don't know if you know what Niger means, but it's not white person. This fella was a North African. Lucius of Cyrene, does anybody know where Cyrene is? North, North Africa. Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Now that's uh, two of the six, if I'm counting that correctly, a third of the leadership team that was ordained by God to commission Paul and Barnabas into their new apostolic ministry. Two of them were North Africans. Mm -hmm. You ever heard that preached before? Mm -hmm. A couple times. Anybody ever else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. An African American leadership team over white people or Jewish people. No, couldn't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Jesus couldn't finish his work on the cross without Simon of Cyrene. Mm -hmm. He couldn't get to the cross to the hill without an African man. What does that say about end times evangelism? He couldn't... Well, anyway. Moving right along. <laughs> As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them to. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them away. I don't see the slightest bit of racism in that group at all. Not the slightest bit. 1 Corinthians 14, 26-32. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, sounds like a church service, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has interpretation. If you come here and the Lord's given you something during the week, and I mean and it's really the Lord, I wish you'd let one of us know, you're free to be used of God in you. You know, we don't want flaky and we don't want, you know, but don't be afraid to try. You know, be willing to be corrected if it's not of God, or correct, but we'll do it privately, lovingly, you know. The goal is to get you to be confident and flourish. If you can't flourish in the house of God, where can you flourish? If you can't be accepted after you fail in here, where can you go? There you go. And these guys were coming expecting not to receive, but to give. John, how would that affect praise and worship? People <laughs> came to a church service ready to give rather than to just receive. He probably wouldn't go home going, oh, I am flat war <laughs> because we came more on that later let all things be done for edification if anyone speaks in a tongue let there be two or at the most three each in turn and let one interpret but if there is no interpreter let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God let two or three prophets speak when's the last time you saw two or three prophets in the room probably been a while and let the others judge. And if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. That's what I wanted you to see. If anything is revealed, the prophet's ministry deals with the revelation gifts of the Holy Ghost. You might want to write this down. You can tell a person is a New Testament prophet if they are someone who publicly and consistently, accurately, flow in two of the three revelation gifts. Because they major in Revelation, it's got to be a major, it can't be one of the three, it's got to be two plus. It might be all three, but it's at least two of the three. Anybody know what those three Revelation gifts are? Discerning of spirits, word of wisdom, and word of knowledge. So a New Testament prophet is someone who flows consistently publicly in two of those three. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. 
A word of wisdom, there's a lot of different ways to design it, but it deals with the future. It is a prophetic revelation from God that deals with the person, place, or thing, and it's, and it's a future something. It's a future event. It's always in the future. Patty, I see in the future a man's wedding ring with a wheat thing through it. That's the future. There's no way I would have known that in a million years. That was the Lord. And it came to pass, so it was accurate. So at that moment, whether I was or wasn't in the prophetic anointing, I was still flowing by the Holy Spirit in a word of wisdom. Okay. The lady with the 1602, word of wisdom. Whether I was or was not in the prophetic, it was a word of wisdom. And it still came to pass. Uh, recently, I gave someone in our church a word. You're going to get a phone call this week. It's going to increase your business. It's going to be good. Be ready. Tuesday at 6.15, I got a call. I got a call from a movie company. They want to hire me to do all their bodyguard or their, their um, stunt stuff and train the people, to the, the actors, to do the stunts. And then they even said I could be a bad guy, too. And they're going to pay me to be on set. I get in the credits. I'm even going to get to fly to France with them because they're going to film over there as well in Canada. Whether I was or wasn't in the prophetic at that moment, that was a word of wisdom that came to pass two days later. And on and on and on. Um, so, word of knowledge is the same thing but in reverse. It's either the past or the present. Mm -hmm. It's supernatural knowledge about the past or the present. That's a word of knowledge. In Africa, I was standing in a section of, of people and I said, there's someone in this section right here, you have pains in your kidneys. The Lord is ministering healing to you right now. At the end of the meeting, the lady comes forward, testifies. I wasn't going to come to church. I had pain in my kidneys. She was pregnant. That's, you know, and she says, as soon as he spoke that word, all the pain left my body. Don't miss church. You might miss your miracle. That was a word of knowing, a word of knowledge right then. Jesus in Luke 6 and 8 did this. You'll see this a lot. This happens a lot. Luke 6 and 8. <clears throat> Actually, let's just start in verse 6. Now it happened on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. So the scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely, whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts. A word of knowledge reveals the things that people think. And said to the man who had the withered hand, Arise and stand here. Jesus himself ministered most often when he was on earth during that three and a half year period of time in his public ministry as an Old Testament prophet. Generally speaking, that's what the office that he stood in in his three and a half years. He was an apostle, for sure, which is actually the ability to flow between all five offices as God sees fit. Mm -hmm. An apostle would be able to flow in the prophetic the apostolic, mm -hmm. the evangelistic, the teaching, and the pastoral. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't start off there. You probably start off scrubbing commodes somewhere 20 or 30 years before, and no one knows or cares who you are but God. <laughs> because there's the humility that goes with the power of God, and it's just horrible to see the obnoxiousness in some of the things we see out there today. You just know they've not passed tests they're supposed to pass. They, they're anointing took them farther and faster than their character could hold them. And they fell. You see that in politics, in sports, in music, and you see it in the pulpit. Alright. Acts 11 and 28. I want to back up in just for a second and tell you about Agabus real quickly. Acts 11 and 28. We're almost done. Acts 11 and 28. And in verse 27, in those days prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Plural. And then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Uh, then there was a response to this word. It says, then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren 
dwelling in Judea. I know you've got to go in a minute. The word is, is because you've come here to do this, you're about to have an end suddenly. You're about to have a flashback to a happier time. Your spirit man and your soul man in unison are going to flourish and dwell in the fat of the land. There's an and suddenly coming for you. I mean, it will not be a little, some, it will be like bells going off on the inside of you. I see it. I, I see you. I even was like in that, of like the emotion of the, of the heart there. I was like, oh, that's powerful. And it came when we were in praise and worship a minute ago. And um, another one, I, I have no idea what this means, but I saw a little boy in a tall grassy field with a big bright white soccer ball. Big soccer ball, little boy, tall grass field. And there were a couple of other students there as well. And uh, you'll know it when you're sitting in the middle of it, whatever it is. Those are word of wisdoms. Did you see what race they were? White people. Yeah. One of them had a little dark hair. No, I didn't think one of them oh, may have had red hair. I mean, what I saw. Um, but the little boy himself had dark hair. But uh, uh, the challenge with the prophetic is you'll give a word, and you might not ever hear it came to pass. Because you've moved on, it's ten years later. I've had things that people spoke to me, and it was years before it came to pass. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know how to get a hold of them to tell them, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's the tough part about that. But anyway, um, Acts 21 and 10. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit. The prophetic ministry is very uh, demonstrative as well. Verbals, pictures, symbols, signs. Um, And it says, When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, So shall the the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. He was telling of Paul's future imprisonment if he goes and does a certain thing. Paul, even with this prophetic word, which was absolutely accurate, and it did come to pass, said, I'm ready not only to be bound, but to die. Some say Paul may have missed God there. Some say, no, the prophet was just saying, this is what's going to happen. And Paul's like, yeah, that's God's will for me. <laughs> I'm checking out. So, you know, it's you can debate all day about it. But nevertheless, um, look at Matthew uh, 12 and 25. The gift of discerning of spirits, I'm, I'm not going to give an example of it. I, I could tell you several. But it's when you see or hear into the realm of the spirit, angels, demons, the Holy Spirit, or Jesus himself, or even the devil. But I doubt seriously anybody here is ever going to see the devil. He's too busy with other people. We're not really probably real high on his list personally, the devil himself. Other demons, probably, but Satan's busy with some other people. People like uh, <coughs> worldwide impacting right now, 50-year solid, stable ministries. That's the one the devil's working overtime. You know, He's got henchmen he sends to people like that. You know, I know that is contrary to most people's theology, but no, the devil's probably not messed with any of us personally mm-hmm. in our whole entire lives. He's sent his henchmen, and most of us have been dealing with low-level devils. If you just want to know the truth, <laughs> and Jesus is going, I wish they would just rise up and kick them off the pole. Oh, that's the devil. I like that. <laughs> A lot of us are just dealing with ourselves, <laughs> blaming the devil. Yeah, yeah. there ain't even him. Husbands love your wives, wives love your husband. <laughs> They're not the devil. <laughs> uh, we were in the oh, first Matthew twelve twenty five. <clears throat> Is this helping anybody? Anybody getting some oh, questions yeah, answered? Good. Anybody having some stuff cleared up? But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, how do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. 
But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So Jesus walked in the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, etc., etc., etc. He, he heard, I'll give you one example, and then I'll tell you this. The last thing you're going to see a New Testament prophet flowing consistently publicly is the gift of prophecy. If you're a prophet, you prophesy. But just because you prophesy doesn't mean you're a prophet. That's right. yeah. Very important to remember. Prophecy is found in 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. Prophecy is divinely inspired speech in a known language that edifies, exhorts, or comforts. It has no revelation in it. It's very general, very broad. It's like a canoe. It carries word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. If you're in that prophetic ministry, you might start off prophesying, but then it gets very, very specific and laser beam. I see a long shoelace attached to a new shoe. So, enjoy. Uh, in, in, when I was in, playing semi-pro basketball, there, I was in the, the third floor of a house I was staying at in Memphis, Tennessee. And there was this really rich family I was staying with to offset the cost of the team's lodging players and stuff. And we'd leave early, get in late. I never got a chance to talk to this kid. He was so quiet, 16-year-old. One night, this kid, he's going to his bed and I'm going to mine, and he levitates in bed. He, like he's doing a girl push-up, you know, on his knees and stuff, but his arms are right by his side. And his face is turned to me, his lips never move, but I heard out of his mouth, but Eric will be at the game tomorrow night. And then he collapsed back in his bed. I mean, the hair on my arm, I was thinking of pea soup and head spinning. And I had been a Christian, but for one year, not even a year. And I, mean, I knew all about it, and I had had some freaky stuff happen already. Six months before, I was, I was cutting grass at my grandmother's house, who had since passed, and my aunt, um, she's actually named for a Cherokee tribe. It's interesting to think about that. But she was staying in my grandmother's house because we were just trying to help her. She had some issues. She was diagnosed schizophrenic, okay? I have another name for it, demon-possessed. And she said, hey, can I fix you some lunch? And I was like, no, it's okay. <laughs> I don't eat bats and frogs, but, uh, you know. Anyway, but she made it anyway. And, and she's sitting on the porch, and I'm sitting on the porch, and she says, the Spirit of Jesus wants to sing you a song. And I was like, no, he doesn't, because that Spirit and the Spirit of my Jesus. That's another Spirit. And she's like, oh, yes, he does. And she starts off singing. And it's beautiful at first, but then in the middle of the song, that same voice I heard six months later in Memphis coming out of that kid was in her. And this voice says, but Eric is of the light, and we cannot harm him. I was like, holy Jesus. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I mean, all, all the hear them, and I, and I can think of, well, the Bible says you rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And you can't cast it out of her if she wants it, so you're just going to have to tell it to shut up. And I, was, I knew they were having a high five party in there. I was like, I'm going to leave them to themselves, and I'm just going to buy them this devil right here. And so I did. And then I tried to show her and help her, you know. And, uh, and I tried to cast it out of her, but I knew she, you know, she didn't work. And she had had an exorcism before. In Iowa recently, I was uh, ministering. A lady is at the last, second to the last in her prayer line. I lay hands on her. It's like somebody punched her in the stomach. She falls on the floor. She starts hissing like a cat at me. Like, you ever try to give a cat a bath? That's what this lady looked like. She's up on the chairs. You know, the whole, all the benches clear. They're all down around, you know, looking. I thought they are going to start sol sol selling Coke and popcorn, you know. And, um, so she's, she's demon-possessed. And um, I tell her to stand up. She stands up and turns and won't face me, you know. And so 45 minutes we go through this. And finally we cast the devils out of her. And she's delivered to this day. And I will see her not very long. And I, when I go back up there, I see her. And she's, she's hungry, on fire for God. The next Sunday she brought her husband and her, her kids, brought her sisters. And she's rocking and rolling with Jesus. She stayed through. She stayed disciple. Amen. When I told her about um, Asia getting healed on Facebook, she was quick to post in. Guess what's coming our way too? You know, healing and power of God and stuff. So it's good stuff. Anyway, I'm trying to be protective there. I'm giving out names. Um, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe I've said what I'm supposed to say tonight, and we're right on time. And I do believe there's some ministry you want to do tonight. Uh, I don't want to conjure up anything. I only want what you want said and, and, and done. Um, but Lord, I know there's someone in here who needs a healing. And, um, 
and the Lord's going to answer to somebody's nervous system. If you're in here tonight and you feel like you have been plagued in your nervous system, whatever it is, you feel like you just could just crumble. Please come forward. The Lord wants to, to speak a word. He wants to minister healing to you. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to do something by the Spirit here that's a little unorthodox. I'm not going to do the praying per se. I'm going to ask someone to sow a seed and pray. So, Carol, would you just stand behind our sister here and just lay hands on her and pray over her nervous system, okay? Now, you guys stretch forth your hands. Let's join our faith in agreement with Carol. Just get in receiving mode. Raise those hands to the Lord. Just be ready to receive. And while you pray for her healing, I'm going to speak to that entity. I tell you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you cease and desist in your maneuvers against a million. You can't have her mind. You can't have her nerves. You can't have anything about her. You are powerless to defeat her in any way, shape, or form. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 1 Peter 5 and 7, she cast the whole of that care over on you, Lord, for you care for her. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that's formed against her shall prosper. That when she leaves here tonight, she's going to know she's been changed. She's going to know she's different. She's going to know she's got that victory and that she's not susceptible to that anymore. Now, friends, as you keep your hands joined in faith, keep in faith, I'm going to teach you for a second. The Bible says if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. Well, surely at least a, prophet, a prophet's a reward is the prophet's anointing. And if you want that in your life, if you want God to show up in your life in the little ways that he will, it doesn't mean he's calling you to full-time prophecy, prophetic ministry tonight. But if you want that in your daily life, keep your faith in join in agreement with us here as we minister. Because that anointing is coming on each of you. And you're going to say things you wouldn't have said. You're going to know things you wouldn't have known. You're going to do things you wouldn't have done. And you're going to know that it's, it comes back to this night when we spoke this into your life. Now somebody in here, I hear the word gold watch. Gold watch. Does somebody want a gold watch? Gold watch. Is that you? Come up here. Oh my goodness gracious. I was trying out to be a youth pastor at a church. And at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, flat on my back, the Spirit of God said, when you get there tonight, call this out, mustache. I was like, mustache? This was kids. He says, there's somebody trying to grow a mustache, he's African American, and he couldn't. Call it out. And I call it out, and that guy was like, <laughs> and guess what he had three months later? A mustache. To this day, he remembers it, and he's an associate pastor. We're friends on Facebook. Raymond Richardson, if you're watching Raymond, hello. He's in Texas. Junior, that is. Raymond Richardson, Jr. Let's just stretch forth our hands. Miss Colleen, I want you to come here and lay hands on her and declare and decree that gold watch to come in. <laughs> now, somebody, somebody recently... You need had a bowl of spaghetti dumped at your feet. Now, this is what I mean. Somebody was supposed to have a dinner. Just come on up. Somebody was supposed to have a dinner, and it got overturned through a argument, strife. It, it wasn't good. Who's had a dinner date overturned recently? Who's had a dinner date overturned recently? Was it me, Lord? <laughs> Are you watching? I forget. People might be watching. This is how you get off over here. You play it off like, oh, this is a TV audience. <laughs> well, anybody who's ever had that bowl of spaghetti turned at your feet, God's going to bring it back around. Amen. God's got double for your noodle trouble. <laughs> double for your noodle trouble. In Jesus' name. Now, somebody in here said in their hearts, I don't think Isaiah 54, 17 works very well for me. Because the weapons formed against me seem to prosper. <laughs> Who's that? Come up here. You spoke that in your heart recently. Anthony, why don't you come up here late and pray for her? Stay right there, Amelia. Pray for the revelation of the truth of that verse. See, the Lord knows you the thoughts of your mind. <laughs> Somebody in here said recently, 
I think you're even hearing me talking about praying for the sick and healing. And you said within your heart, I want to do that. I want to see that happen. I want to lay my hands on somebody and I want to see them healed. Who is that? Somebody's wanting to lay hands on the sick and see it manifest for themselves. Do I get to defer this to the TV audience as well? Whoever you are, just receive that. Wherever you are, just receive that in Jesus' name. God's got that for you. Somebody in here has had a door slammed in your face recently. And the Lord said, I want to open it. The prophet can open it. It wasn't supposed to close. Who's, who's, who's had a door closed in their face recently? I mean, it was, you had your heart set on it. Come up here. Was it, was it at the jewelry store? No. Hey, you know what will open that door? Tommy. A gold. Never mind. All right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Pastor Tommy, would you would you just stretch forth your hands towards Lynette and declare that door to open? See that anointing can just go over the whole room. It's not just on me. It's just on Somebody in here is praying for spiritual clarification. Everything you hear seems to be some parable you don't understand, and you want the Bible to make sense. Somebody in their heart is saying, "I just want to understand the Bible, and I just don't." Who's that? Who wants, who wants the Bible to stop seeming like a big parable and you want it to read like the newspaper? Who's in here having trouble with reading the Bible and understanding what they're reading? Anybody? Parables? Parables? Parables. Who is that? Hey, Jesus, hey Jesus, do you surf? You sur- I see a surfboard under your feet. I see a surfboard. That'll be fun to watch that come to pass. That'll be fun. Is it? Because it's not always literal. Sometimes it's symbolic. That's true. It could be a job at a surf shop. It could be who knows. Some, a skateboard. You could somebody. You know. You yeah. It could be anything. So. Let's just worship the Lord real quickly. Lord, we just worship you. Lord, we just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you for this. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for that. Who in here likes blueberry snow cones? I wouldn't turn it down. Is that you? Rita, come up here. Lynette, why don't you pray for Rita to have her fill of blueberry snow cones? <laughs> fun, fun, fun. The Lord is fun. All the blueberries <laughs> Uh, somebody's needing a turn in their relationship with their daughter. Oh, God! <laughs> Rita, just turn right around. It's your night, Lynette. And that blessing mm-hmm. away right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, Rita, just pray over that. Pray over that, Rita. Pray over that situation. Somebody's son is about to get married. I hear the word, her son, bride. Anybody's got a single son that's eligible to get married in America? Yeah, I got four of them. Hey, would you pray for his son and the bride? Just whoever that may be to be the right one. And no interference, no delay. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Who in here enjoys reading Watchman Nee? Watchman Nee. Anybody know who Watchman Nee is? Anybody enjoy reading his stuff? Anybody been reading his stuff recently? Anybody? Well, then we must be handing out a word of wisdom. That evidently hasn't happened yet. But you'll enjoy it when you do. It's good stuff. It is. I see the word lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Close encounter. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like a flash of lightning. <laughs> Somebody's been dealing with a situation, an oppressive situation. And you're about to see it disappear like a flash of light. Amen. You guys okay with this? You want to yeah. stop? Okay. Great. Oh, you're going. I'm praying you're going. to keep going. 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 Can you tell the atmosphere is a little more charged than this? Who in here likes Indian food? <laughs> oh my god! This thing's standing up there. What does this hurt, Oh my goodness, gracious. I see the word jelly. Mm -hmm. D E L H I. Okay. And it may as well be D E L I. Mm -hmm. In Indian food. <laughs> You want to just receive that right now. Just right there on your own. Oh, Nobody God. praying, just receive it. No. Just receiving that right there. Be a divine appointment. Yeah. Divine appointment. Oh my goodness gracious. Somebody needs their grass cut and the Lord says, Don't worry about it, I got it. I got it taken care of. Somebody's got boxes in their house, the Lord says, Don't worry about it, I'm gonna take care of it. <clears throat> Don't worry about the boxes, I'm gonna take care of it. <laughs> and I hear this to say to somebody Jesus is your independence Amen. Jesus is the consummate July 4th <laughs> 1776 <laughs> Jesus is your independence Thanks. just let it be <laughs> now somebody in here has a great daughter who's a role model. And we just we just want to speak a blessing over that Amen. that daughter. Now I think that's probably for me right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I see my daughter right Amen. there. Amen. Uh, let's lift up my daughter right there. Yes. Anyway. Her name is of, of all things, her name's Erica. I tell people we're slow in the South. I don't have to remember a whole bunch. Just throw an A in there. <laughs> Erica Lynn Moore is her name. She's a 19 sophomore in college and working, 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 and doing some modeling lately as well, too. And so let's just, if she's a godly girl, let's just speak that over her. That she don't fall into a pit, that she don't be drawn off, that she stands strong and firm in her faith, and she says no, and she says no, and means it, and she says yes, and it's yes, and led by God, love of God never fails in her life. And there's no distance in the spirit, our hearts are knit and bound in love towards one another. And we'll have an enjoyable time when we get to see each other in, 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 in just a few days. And her health, that she not be overworked, and she be financially prosperous. Philippians 14, all of her needs is met. All of her want and desire, in Jesus' name. Philippians 19, Psalm 23, 1, Psalm 37, 4. And she'll get to come see us, too. When it's right, when it's time, she'll get to come see us. In the name of Jesus. Stubborn right now. 
Stubborn bosses that work and Why don't you just stay behind these two ladies right here and pray? Pray for them. Just lay hands on their heads and pray for them. Pastor Tommy, what's in your heart to say? What's that I hear in your heart to say? First thing that came to you. First thing that came to you. Say it. Oh, glory to God. My, my uh, wife's ex-boss, when, when you mentioned that word to them, okay. that's what came to my mind. What happened there? Um, she would go into work and be joyful and happy and, and they'd be gossiping or something. She would say, you know, God's not happy with that. And minister throwing pearls before swine and she got tore up over it. So no pearls before swine. Thank you. Now the daughter thing, my ex-wife's is in going to a suit sayer, mm. and my daughter is being strung into it. Mm. Oh yeah, heavy duty. My son is speaking, and I've spoke to my daughter, but so my daughter is not wanting to hear me or hear him. Oh. Trying to let him know that you know. What's your name? Chelsea. And your ex-wife? Lori. Lori and Chelsea. Chelsea. Lynette, why don't you And her whole that? family is getting involved in, in the, the spirit. Why don't you just speak to that in the spirit? Lynette and Chelsea. Lori and, Lori and Chelsea. Lori and Chelsea. And her whole family. And her whole family. They're all going on a weekly basis. Sucking my daughter into it. Not anymore. No. We pray it be empty, swept, and put in order, and filled. And we will shut our eyes, set them free. In Jesus' name, you shall Glory. 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 Sales. I hear, I hear the word sales. Who needs an increase in sales? Increase in sales. <laughs> Come forward. Amen. Amen. We can stop any time. That's the point I didn't make. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You can't say, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> couldn't help me. Yes, you do. <laughs> Amen. You're the prophet, you're supposed to be telling the truth. Right. It takes that printer you're supposed to be a truth saver. <laughs> <laughs> that printer to <laughs> Read it. Come up here and pray for her for her sales to increase. <laughs> We're sowing you a seed right now. Release. Release. In abundance. Miss Colleen, I hear the word fresh wind. Pardon me? Fresh wind. Fresh wind in your sails, you. taking you across the ocean, taking you in a boat across the water. Fresh wind in your sails. Uh, Kelly, would you pray over her for her fresh wind? Fresh wind. He renewed us in the midst of the years of the work. He renewed us right in the middle of it. Hallelujah. Retirement. Who's like retirement accounts been suffering? Retirement. It was a 401k, now it's a 101. <laughs> who, who wants it? I hear re- increase in retirement fund. Increase in retirement fund. Who is that? Who wants that? I need to bring, there you go. Hallelujah. Bring one around. Hallelujah. Why don't you pray for him? Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, I just pray right now that you would increase, Lord, his retirement time. Lord, we ask this in your name. Lord, we pray blessing and increase and anointing, Lord, on the funds that, that, that this man deserves, this man needs. And Lord, something that you want to give to him. And now, Lord, I just release it in the Spirit that these things be. That I just take the keys, Lord, and open these things up, Lord. I take the keys, Lord, that that, that, just, that we just break forth, Lord, this, this, this flow into your life, Lord. 
and more than we did in favor. He agreed. He said, we're two or three. We're going to go together and agree on anything. And Lord, my brother and I, we agreed, Lord, that there would not be abundance of finances or retirement so that he could not secure, Lord, and do the work of the Lord, and that he could be a blessing to others and not struggle and not stress, Lord Jesus, because it's not a new, Lord. And you said that you would be my all of our needs according to your riches and glory, Lord. And we just claim that word. And, and you also said, Lord, that that, 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 you, that we don't need to, to worry about this or toil or whatever, but you supply all our needs, Lord. And I just pray that you increase, Lord, I send it forth, Lord, by faith, Lord, by faith, Lord. We speak it, we speak it done in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just do a miracle, Lord. Just give them a miracle, Lord. After a miracle comes forth, Lord, that it just let finances will come from the north, south, east, and west, Lord, from places that we don't, that, that we can't even ask for things, Lord, but that you would open up doors. In the name of Jesus, open up those doors. Let's gather up here and pray, pray, read it through to be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I expect great things, Lord. Great things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 You can imagine the rest of the story. Greed needs ministry and love and affirmation and undergirding and help to stay straight, to stay clean, to stay free. Rita's friend was pushed off of a ninth-story balcony last Friday night. She was supposed to be at that party. She was with us at church. For Rita, every day is the day of life and death. Right now, Rita's choices are huge. And Rita needs our undergirding to make it through. No man is an island to himself. And Rita needs to know what real Christianity looks like. What real sisters in the Lord look like. Rita needs phone calls during the week. Rita needs women who have been walking with Jesus to check on her. Amen. Rita needs to be a pretty and pampered next Friday night. <laughs> Amen. Rita will be at pretty and pampered. Uh, we claim Amen. Because you guys are going to help me make sure she's there. Kill it. Yes, Lord. Kelly. Some of you are going to get her phone number before you leave tonight. Her email. <laughs> Rita's not going to take advantage of it, but she's going to let you love on it. And if you've got a Jesus. Sure. Whose birthday is it? Jesus. Tomorrow. Who's had a birthday recently? Keep praying, keep praying for Rita. You can sing over that happy birthday. Sing over Rita. Happy because truth be told, every day is Rita's birthday. Psalm 6819, daily he loves us with benefits. Every day is Rita's birthday. Every day is her birthday. And he's given out gifts. He's given out the gift of the Holy Ghost. He's given out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can we just tell those devils to go the Jesus? Yeah, but sure. Cease and desist in the name of Hallelujah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rita Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Hallelujah. You realize you're all on camera too, don't you? That's right. That's right. Thank you, that was a powerful prayer. Rita, are you speaking in tongues? Yeah. If you're not, we're not. I believe I do. I do. Start, start tomorrow, even tonight. Amen. The thing's broken. The hindrances have been broken. Amen. 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 You guys want to take Rita to the side and encourage her and how to make it Sizable 
income relief. Somebody needs a financial, huge four digit financial miracle. Sure. Four sure. digits. Four digits is that? I see the number 4,000. Come forward. Like 40,000. Got a grant. So for four grants. No, you need some of this too. Come on. Nobody needs money. <laughs> I see sizable financial interest. Just stretch forth your hands. Say this with me. Say, I receive, I receive the, miracle. the miracle. The miracle. A gift from God. A gift from God. Right here. Right here. Right, here. right now. Right now. Right now. Planted into my life. Planted into my life. Because I believe. Because I believe. I receive. I receive. I receive. By faith. By faith. Right. If I need to do anything, if I need to say anything, if I need to see anybody, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. If I need to see anybody, if I need to see anybody, I will do it. I will do it. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to see anybody, if I need to see anybody, I will do it. I will do it. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I need to plant a seed, I will plant a seed. If I need to plant a seed, if I we act as if it's so. We thank you and we praise you ahead of time by faith for that financial miracle, for that sizable financial increase, for that relief, for that debt paid in the name of Jesus. And we need that debt paid in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. And we, 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast the whole of that care over on you. For you care for us affectionately in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Healing hands in Jesus' name. Healing hands. Healing hands in Jesus' name. Go use them. Go use them. Healing hands in Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' ideas. In Jesus' ideas. In Jesus' ideas. Knowledge of witty and Creative and genuine ways of doing things. Cutting Holy Ghost quarters by the wisdom and the favor of God. The providential order of things by the Spirit in the Spirit in the natural. Wisdom of God in the name of Jesus. Time redeeming ingenuitive ways of doing things. You know? Amen. Carol, favor, 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 favor. Everybody say that with me. Say, Carol, favor, 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 favor. Jesus. Just a, taking a bath in the favor of Almighty God. In Jesus. Hey, Seuss, in Knoxville, there's a Red Robin rest. Red Robin Restaurant. And I think it's the coolest thing because they have a TV in the floor. It's a glass floor. When you're waiting for your table, there's a TV. And I see you sitting somewhere, and I see a glass floor, and I see fish swimming at your feet. <laughs> the Lord knows what that means. You'll know it when you're in the middle of it. All right, let's praise and thank the Lord for tonight. Lord, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you. Lord, if you want to do anything else, Ephesians 3, go ahead. We're open to it. We're open to it. We're open to it. Jesus' name. Somebody needs... Oh, we're not done yet. We're, if you got to go, you got to go. We're, we're not done. Somebody needs je a clothes and jeans. I hear clothes and jeans. I hear that. See, y'all thought I would clothe you in righteousness was like some spiritual oh span. <laughs> no, it, it got cares about the natural things. <laughs> Anthony and Tommy, I hear this in my heart. Come pray for her clothes and jeans. Oh, See, you know there's faith in the room because she's acting like it's crisp, like she's getting ready to open it up right here. Right here. You know that's faith. Because the stores are just about to be closed. You more closets. New car. I hear new car. New car. I want your old one. 
God is positioning you in a short time and, and I hear him say you've been in a box but he's about to put you in a situation that's going to burst you like a pinata and all your gifts and talents and abilities are going to come out and people are just going to gobble them up you're about to have a divine encounter with Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner, whose banner over me is love. You are. Not this one, that one. You are. Say that with me. Jehovah's banner over me is love. All day long, the Lord is quieting me with his love. His eternal, everlasting love. And I am a pinata. I'm a Holy Ghost pinata with gifts, talents, and abilities. An increase and favor is coming my way. My life is turning up and out in Jesus' name. Because present circumstances are not worthy of me. God's taking you higher. God's Jehovah Kwan, too. Jealous God, jealous over you, and sin that would try to separate you from Him ever. He's jealous for you. You watch out. You watch out. He's giving me another one, but I'm, I'm going to wait. I'll keep you ready here. But it's good. So stick around. Because when you're ready, I'm going to tell you what it says. Somebody in here is getting ready to take a trip and you want to take this with you. Who in here is getting ready to go on a trip and you want to you want to be a Holy Ghost going somewhere to happen? It don't have to be a long trip. It could be a short trip. Who's going on a trip and you want to be the Holy Ghost going somewhere to happen? Miss Colleen? Yes. I'm going to take a trip. Let's stretch forth our hands to Miss Colleen. Say, Miss Colleen, you... You, my friend, are the Holy Ghost going somewhere to happen. Because the Holy Spirit lives big in you. In the name of Jesus. And we release you by faith to be that sign and wonder. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I heard somebody in here say, when I was talking about casting demons out, that'd be cool. I'd like to do that. Who's that? Just once in your life, you'd like to cast the devil out. Off of somebody or out of somebody. Come on, take him out of me. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Not a problem. He's too smart for you and Tommy to come up here and just lay hands on him for that. Just a holy boldness and divine opportunity. No, you are. Don't say I want to. I am. Say I am. Say I am. Now somebody in here. I am. Has a relationship. And you need the Holy Ghost to work in it. And I believe it's one that I don't know about. But there may be one I do know about. But it, but it might be something I don't know about. And you have a relationship and there's quarreling that takes place. And you want the Holy Ghost to minister in that quarrelsome relationship. And this will be the last one, as far as I know. Okay, well, we'll wait a minute. Quarrelsome relationship. And if I know about it, that's fine. But if I don't, well, then that's fine, too. Yeah. I'm coming. Quarrelsome relationship. You'd like to see the Spirit of God move in. All right? Uh, Amelia, Carol, I want you all to double team his quarrelsome relationship with bathe it in prayer in Jesus' name. Kelly, that'd be all right if they pray for your husband? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
And let it stop right now. Lord, we draw a line in the sand and we'll go no further. And this relationship will not be broken and Satan will not have his way. We agree. We agree. We're two or three gathered together. We agree according to thy word. Let it be done. Let it be so from this night forward, Lord, that there will be a change and a shift in the atmosphere. I decree this strong man is strife. And his strife, the strong man is bound, and all that has been spoken. All these strongholds will be pulled down. Yeah. We pull down the stronghold. Yeah. In the, name of Jesus. the spirit of strife yeah. is a strong man in this situation. We bind the strong man first. Yeah. And then everything else has to come, has yeah. to go. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus' name. Your soul yeah. is very strong. You have a strong soul. There's no strife. What will overcome this man's life? It is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If it's the Holy Ghost laughter, let it out. No need to be shy in here. Let it out. We can all use some laughter. You know, unusual manifestations follow the prophetic heart. See, God made his man first. He didn't do away with Let it out. Just roll in the floor. He made his man first. He had a place. And strife was 
Christ doesn't have anything to do with your relationship when Jesus is concerned. And he's strong and wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. You recognize it. You recognize it. See, we don't war in flesh and blood at all. We war in the spirit. And we will go in and we pull down that stand. He binds you. He's got to go. Strike. Because you're aware of the strongest of living God. Amen. Amen. I hear the word candy, and I, and I see Anthony walking down the street chewing gum, gum smacking his lips, having a victory over the enemy. I hear the word candy. Who likes candy? Come up here. Come up here, candy. I just declare that word candy. Candy. <laughs> and your blueberry snow <laughs> Carnival. <laughs> Not carnal, but carnival. Yeah. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Another thing the prophetic ministry does is it decrees. <laughs> it makes possible what never would have happened. <laughs> the prophet's ministry, when it when it's in its full function, it will speak a word over your life. <laughs> that never would have happened had it not been spoken <laughs> under that anointing. It decrees. That's the power of a decree. It's like Abraham blessing his son. Yes. Another thing the prophetic ministry does is it makes it easier for the other fourfold ministers to come in behind and minister because it penetrates the heavenly like no other ministry does. If you come behind a prophet to preach, you will find it ten times easier that had he not gone in or she gone in front of you. It clears the room. It also carries a great price to be functional and effective in that. Um, he gave me 9.15. We have two minutes. I want to give you an opportunity to sow an offering. Not your tithe, but, the, but an offering. There's envelopes here. Just make it payable to, to Faith Christian International or me, however you want to do it. If it's cash, fill it out there. But... What I want you to do is, I want you to think, if this offering represents my tugging on the mantle, how much do I want to tug on that mantle? Ask yourself, what do I want to tug? If you weren't here when I told this before, Asia, the girl that we prayed for last Wednesday, went to the doctor to, she was scheduled for surgery, surgery Friday, and the, the doctor was, if this was after we prayed, the doctor took her to her operating room with an IV in her arm and her gown on, and was telling her, now when, when we do this surgery to remove the fluid in your lungs, your lungs may collapse and you may die, but you might not. <laughs> And then the surgery's going to take this long, and then uh, it'll be this long to recover. <laughs> but for some reason, he took another x-ray before he operated, and he came back, and he called her to the room, and he says, Asia, I want you to look at your x-ray. There's not enough fluid to operate. Last Friday, this is how it was. You had 90 days to live. This Friday, the fluid was not enough to operate. All the cancer around your heart is gone. I don't want to see you till January. Amen. She's normally Amen. there in the doctors once a month like clockwork. He said, I don't want to see you till January. This is someone that gave 90 Hallelujah. days to live yes, Jesus. last Friday. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. House situation that we're in, which we, I've just been given to God. But I uh, got a message today that it's all been dropped by the bank, and we're good. We're there. We have a house. Merry Christmas. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got something they want to share? Something else that's happened? Anthony? Um, I saw something earlier when good. I was praying. Okay. I think I know who it's for, but I saw like a, I think it was like a little toy gun. It was upside down, and there was like one of those 
orange sticky darts in it. Yeah. So, I don't know who that's for. Probably no weapon formed against you. Shall uh, probably throw so <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 that's good. <laughs> a lot of a lot of times you'll see something and Amen. and you'll just you'll be in a situation. You know what you know what came to my mind? This is what came to my mind. I'm just gonna shoot straight with you. I thought, Lord, am I gonna be at somebody's house wondering if I'm supposed to be there or not? And I happen to see one of their kids' toys lay on the ground and it's an upside down gun with a dart and it'd be a comfort to my heart that I'm actually at the right place at the right time Amen. when I was wondering. Amen. Something like that can be huge. You just sure. you know, and give you the confidence to flow in a moment when you normally wouldn't. You'd be vacillated. It's powerful stuff. <laughs> Powerful stuff. And Anthony's been after it before. That's not his first time. He's been after it before. Well, guys, stretch forth your hands towards us and say, Father, 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 we, we decree, we decree, we decree, we declare, we declare, we declare the maximum yield return possible. The maximum yield return possible on this seed sown. Father, take this as an offering from us and use it to further your kingdom in real tangible ways. In Jesus' name. Amen. I've got a friend that's going to Zambia to minister, and I'm, I'm thinking I may put a portion of that or all of it. We'll see what the Lord says. Uh, so you may be, probably, you're at least so and some in here to Zambia. If you don't know about Zambia, Zambia's in South Central Africa. There's a life expectancy of 38 years old in Zambia. In other words, most people don't live past 38 years old. Um, AIDS, poverty, hunger. There's no high rises. It's villages and mud huts. And uh, I'm on the board of a ministry that's got 76 acres outside of Lusaka, Zambia. We're going to build up over there. I'm probably going to arrange a trip next year to go over there if anybody's interested in wanting to go to Africa you're welcome to go probably be $2,500 something like that to do it um, we'll see but yeah we're sowing at least a portion of it into Africa right there uh, you're just this all hearts and minds clear let's, Lord we just speak a blessing over them and we thank you Father for your goodness and your mercy that follow us all the days of our life we thank you for the opportunity to gather here tonight. It'll never be like this, at this mo this exact way, ever again. Lord, we thank you for what you've done tonight. For anybody watching and viewing, that Father, that, that we pray they would receive that healing. We pray that they would receive that word of knowledge, that anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. That they would never, never, never be the same again. Lord, let that prophetic anointing flow in our lives as you see fit. And Father... Just, just destroy demonic strongholds in our life through the word and the anointing of God in this office. And Father, we thank you for these precious, precious people who have come tonight. I pray they give you the time and the patience for these words to come to pass. I pray they would not get ahead of you or lag behind you, but they'd stay in tune and in step with you. I pray, Lord, that they would fulfill the requirements that it takes for these words to come to pass. I pray they'd be at the right place at the right time, highly favored and sought after as your word declares it will be, Psalm 5 and 12, like a mighty shield surrounding them. In Psalm 91, 10, that no evil would befall them, that no plague would come near their dwelling. In Psalm 23, 1, that the Lord, you are their shepherd, and therefore they shall not want for anything. Psalm 37 and 4, as they delight themselves in you, give to them the desires of their heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Guys, I don't ever keep you this long, but I believe mm -hmm. we were accurate tonight. So, mm -hmm. all right. There's the chicken and yellow rice and dirty rice in there. You don't want to... Something to eat. I used to be up Hallelujah. Not bad for a message you created in the kitchen. Yes, <laughs> Cooked right up. <laughs>